A lot of the phones that we've seen on this channel are mostly only cheap because they were popular and have now flooded the market now no one wants them. But for once, this phone's an anomaly and is actually the complete opposite. Now this right here is Amazon's Fire Phone, something that I hadn't really heard about till I saw one pop up surprisingly cheap over on CEX. They very infrequently pop up on eBay auctions, and it's even more surprising when one pops up at a CEX. And the Buy It Now offerings on eBay are a tad expensive for what they are, so generally people don't buy them, leaving us a very weird situation where a lot of people don't even know this phone exists. So what was the Amazon Fire Phone? Released in July of 2014, it's nearly a decade old phone at this point, but it certainly doesn't look like it. The idea behind the phone was to take the successful and experience gained from the uh, Kindle Fire tablets and transform that idea into a mobile phone. The initial plans for the phone, going over and rereading them 10 years on, actually sound really impressive with the idea that NFC could be used in the future for making payments, which is something we actually have today, and plans for a force sensitive grip for functions, a bit like what the Google Pixel phones would go on to end up having, and something that I use quite frequently back when I did have a Google Pixel. The issue is, not all of those planned features made it into the phone across its four years of development. In fact, very few of them actually did, meaning the phone was left with mostly just gimmicks. Long story short, when it came to the launch of the device, it wasn't as simple to use as an iPhone was, and couldn't sway any of its customers there. On the other hand though, it simply wasn't powerful enough hardware-wise to sway any Android power users, leaving just a customer base of die-hard Amazon fans. Those people do exist. Of course, that doesn't include people that were offered it on a contract by places like O2, Vodafone, and of course other places across the world. But when your phone's main features are just, you know, quirks, and the fact it can sell you things on the fly, well, any normal phone can do that in not a great deal of extra time. Bring us to where we are today. An idiot like myself with no experience with this phone is going to get an opinion on it. Now, the phone feels relatively premium. The first main thing you're going to notice are the four cameras on each edge of the phone, which certainly does give it a bit of a unique and gawky kind of feeling. My phone even came with an Amazon branded case, which may or may not have came with these phones, I'm not too sure, which does a decent job of protecting the back of the phone, which is made of glass and reminds me of the Nexus 4 or Nexus 5 with its design, both very good phones in fact. So it's sort of got that very plain Android look from that sort of 2014-2015 era, where the phones, they weren't exactly thin, but they were nice enough design and they did look sleek enough without just being, you know, bendable slabs like we see today. But now we've got the phone, what is actually inside this odd little slab? What are the specifications? Released eight years ago, the Amazon Fire Phone was a tad overpriced for the specs on offer, with the only good deals on it actually being available through contract. If you bought it direct through Amazon, it wasn't exactly a great price. But that by no means makes it a weak phone, far from it in fact, as you'll see later on in the video. Powered by the very nice Qualcomm Snapdragon 800 with four cores clocking in at a relatively good speed, slightly over 2GHz in fact, and this is also helped by the fact it has 2GB of DDR3L RAM on board, which isn't actually a small amount even today for basic tasks. The rather nice Adreno 330 graphics card is included to power the screen, and a major complaint people had was that it's only a 720p screen. But in all honesty, I've had phones from beneath this resolution all the way up to 2560x1600, and I can genuinely say in the real world, I have never once noticed or cared about the resolution of a phone screen. It's so bloody small that unless you're using it for image editing or work, you're not really going to notice the difference, which does in turn help the battery life of the Amazon Fire phone, as it's only got a power 720p screen. On the other side though, you could talk about the battery, which is also a fairly large size, being 2400 milliamp hours. Which, you know, with a 720p screen and a relatively large battery life, does give this phone a nice battery. It runs a custom Android 4.4.4 ROM, developed and locked down by Amazon themselves. Sadly, to this day, the bootloader is still locked, but there are bodged ways around this, as you'll get to see later on. 
Upon first boot of the phone, the initial operating system caught me off guard. It's being based on Android 4.4.4 and is already a bit old at this point, but to have it completely skinned up by Amazon really just felt counterintuitive. There are no easy to use bottom buttons on the operating system, you have to swipe up to go backwards, which coming from an iPhone X, which lets you do that to change apps, means it all gets very confusing in my mind a little bit, and I know back in that day, you know, controls weren't as standardised as they are today, but a lot of Android phones had either physical buttons or on-screen buttons to go backward and show your apps or go to the homepage. None of that here. There's a 50-50 chance on whether or not you'll actually be able to go back, as it just didn't seem to work for me all the time. I'd be browsing the internet, I'd swipe up, and it just wouldn't go back, it wouldn't do anything. When you do get past the rather confusing controls and layout, I will say that comparing it to a lot of customer Android ROMs, they have done a very convincing job disguising the underlying operating system. It looks very sleek and it's very modern considering the age of it. For some reason, it's really hard to capture the main selling point of the operating system, which is supporting the 3D effect that is built into almost every aspect of Amazon's Fire OS thing. So using the phone, I was able to capture some really nice footage of this in motion. All the icons rotate and move with the positioning of the phone, wallpapers and backgrounds are interactive with hidden little details that actually require you to move the phone around to see them more. Absolutely fascinating technology given the age of the phone, but like most things about this phone, the ideas are fantastic. The actual use and implementation? Well, they're really just gimmicks. Once you've seen it before, you're not going to be turning your phone around. It, it's like an idea to sell the phone. Someone will see it and think it's cool, but in reality, does it help you? Not really. General use-wise, the phone feels very snappy when browsing the web and when you're just using it around. The main issue I ran into is the limited app support, as there is no Google Play Store. You're left with awful value premium apps and some pretty awful ancient free-to-play games. In terms of applications, you'll find there aren't many alternative. Things like YouTube aren't on there, things like eBay aren't on there, because the main focus is on being able to use Amazon's own experience which is all well and good, till you realise the phone was only on sale for about a year and support dropped about six months after that. So with a lockdown bootloader, limited app support and no support from Amazon in the last, last what, about seven and a half years, you'd expect this phone to be worthless. Well, actually no. See, when I had this phone on order, I'd already turned to the XDA forums to try and find a solution to this Amazon operating system issue, as you don't actually need to unlock a bootloader to run a custom ROM. You're just limited to the version of Android your bootloader can recognise, as that's what actually boots you into Android. So in this case, any Android 4.4.4 ROM that has been ported to this phone should boot, provided we can actually get it rooted and get a custom recovery on there. Now it's worth noting there is a guide available on the Firephone subreddit which is an excellent resource linking most things you will actually need, many of which will work with varying success. In my case though, I think this is more you know, for the American phones rather than those European and British phones. So it's a bit harder to follow the guide when not everything works. In my experience, I couldn't get the Kingroot app to actually do anything. I could get it to install, but it would fail after a few minutes, even when it got to a rather high percentage, and I was just staring at this phone, hoping it would install, and it just didn't. So I opted to load all the resources onto the phone via a micro USB cable, enable debugging mode on the phone. Usually I'm not a fan of automatic routing software, as they can be a bit dodgy and a bit malicious, but using the Kingroot PC software, it took a few minutes and a rather concerning amount of restarts of the phone, but eventually we did enable root on the phone like this. Once we'd actually achieved root on the phone, all we needed was a custom recovery, which can be installed on the phone by itself as it's now got full user permissions. Then it's just the usual nerve-wracking process of wiping an entire operating system, threatening to brick your phone, and then installing a new ROM and the latest ports of the GAPS Nano package I think I used, which, you know, brings a bit of Google functionality back to this phone which is the exact phone, exact phone, exact thing this phone is missing. And within about 10 minutes of that, the phone had booted itself up and we were ready to go with a real operating system.
Launching to the stock environment of Android, it already felt a lot more pleasant to use than Amazon's original operating system. Credit where it's due though, it's one of those times where there wasn't a great deal of speed difference between the two, as Amazon had done a pretty decent job keeping the bloat down. So although it was a lot of Amazon bloat, it wasn't very intensive like those phones that used to come with Facebook and all this other nonsense on them, where once you swapped to stock Android, because none of that was running, it felt smoother, so there wasn't a great deal of speed disparity between the two. Only a little bit though when you were doing some very heavy tasks. I immediately leaped to install some applications, which wasn't exactly smooth sailing. The stock Android App Store wouldn't actually allow me to install any apps. I could log in, initiate a download, see my purchases, but it wouldn't go anywhere. I had to track down and manually install the newest version of the Play Store for this version of Android, which almost immediately started all of the Android apps that I'd queued up. Some apps like YouTube needed manually installing and were a bit funny when it came to working, often deciding not to work, but once I'd got a new launcher and the Indian version of Gboard, which is an excellent for keyboard to run on these old versions of Android as it's just the latest version of Gboard but still supports Android 2 onwards, we had this Fire Phone looking like it could be a modern release, at least on the software side of things. Once we got to this point though, things were much improved. I've needed a cheap Android phone to keep around for things like OBD2 reading and on-the-fly computing nonsense that I can't do on an iPhone. When my Volvo C70 went down to the garage to have a bit of work done, I was actually given an XC60 T5 as a courtesy car, and I was able to pair this to the in-car system, make calls and generally use the phone pretty well. In the real world, stock Android did seem to be a lot faster at pairing to devices than the Amazon OS previously, and you know, everything you expect worked fine. Video playback worked exceptionally well, now we had the YouTube app. Web browsing was the same, given that we now had an up-to-date browser. I used a mixture of the stock browser, the Oprah browser, browser and the latest port of Chrome to this version of Android. Out of all of them, only Chrome worked with all websites, but it wasn't the quickest as it is quite heavy. Not that there was any real slowdown, just it was a little bit slower to load some pages. So the phone's decently fast, app support is now there. The real question is, now that we can use the phone in the real world, how does it actually hold up in the benchmarks? Starting off our benchmarks pretty hard, we have Half-Life 1 running via the XH 3D engine. Originally I was quite sceptical as people have said the phone just wasn't powerful enough for the real world, but working my way up the resolutions I started incredibly low and ended up running the game with a near lock 60fps in 720p HD which is extremely impressive. The IPS screen is nice and bright which retained plenty, plenty of detail which can actually be a bit of a pain in the ass to see on the camera, so I hope you can actually see it decently well. All in all it was very nice to see this game running this well on this phone. Now PUBG Mobile I just downloaded by accident when I saw it on the App Store and I wasn't expecting it to work. Initially it struggled upon loading in, running very poorly even at the lowest settings. But once the game had warmed up a little bit, it started to run near flawlessly. It was fine in and out of matches, it was just that first initial match that really struggled. From here onwards we were only seeing between 50 and 30 FPS, anywhere between that sort of range. But for a free to play mobile game, and one that can be rather intensive, it wasn't an issue and you could more than enjoy this on the Amazon Fire Phone. But only if you aren't running that horrible stock operating system. Free Civ isn't usually very intensive, but can be a bit funny on some phones given its rather old Civ 1 and 2 origins. I personally found it ran really well on the Fire Phone, as the lower resolution kept the buttons large enough to actually press, and gave enough screen real estate to actually see what was going on. Either way, a very decent experience that didn't have any slowdown between turns, even in the late game. Oddworld Munch's Odyssey, which is a port of an original Xbox game, also ran fantastically. These are some rather intensive titles so far, and usually we just about see playable frame rates on most devices. Here though, we're actually seeing really compelling performance that can be better than the original platforms they were de destined for. The game suffered with little to no slowdown, and even though loading was notably quicker than a lot of devices, it led me to believe that the flash storage actually used by Amazon was of a decent quality, as usually on a lot of these older phones it's degraded and I can have to sit here for about, you know, a solid 20 to 30 seconds between levels while the game loads. That was not the case here. In terms of emulation, I did a few quick tests which confirmed that virtually anything up to the N64 and PlayStation 1 are completely playable. You might be able to get away with Nintendo DS emulation, but I wouldn't exactly promise that given how intensive that can be on a game-to-game -game basis. For most emulation needs though, it is absolutely brilliant, and given it's got a lower resolution screen and a big battery, that battery doesn't go down anywhere near as you might expect.
So in conclusion, that there brings us round to the end of the video. And does the Amazon Fire Phone deserve to be a failure? Well, yes, as the phone is not half bad, but the gimmicks are hardly noticeable outside of a locked down and nearly redundant port of Android. You're best off treating it as a rather robust and rather long lasting generic Android phone once you've just slapped Lineage OS on it. That's the best use for this phone. It's pretty well built, it's pretty sturdy. I can't really say much else about it, but I just need it as a basic Android slab for talk and other OBD2 bits. But thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this little review and look back at the Amazon Fire Phone, and good night.